morning guys, what's going on? Happy 4th of July to you. Well, by the time you're saying this, it's gonna be later than that, but today is the 4th of July, and I am on the boat today with Victor. What's going on? I got my mom and my dad up front. And we are dolphin fishing today. We have a absolutely perfect day. It's as flat as flat gets. We filled up the live well this morning with some live baits. Um, the beaches are closed, so we went right up close to the beach and Victor cast netted only twice and we filled the live well with little nice sized pilchards. And right now what we're doing is we're doing what we call run and gun. So we're running, looking for giant patches of seaweed. We stop, we're casting little bucktail jigs, tossed out a live bait, hoping to find mahi swimming around the seaweed. And that's what we're looking for. So my dad's casting a bucktail jig. My mom's casting a little bucktail jig. Vic's casting a little bucktail Vic's jig. Vic's casting a little bucktail jig. And I'm just driving the boat for now. Check out all the live bait. We probably have enough live bait to catch a hundred mahi, so hopefully we find some. We found a couple patches of seaweed so far, but no dolphins so far. But I am about to gaff a trash trophy here. You look for floating things while you're fishing. Floating things usually hold bait, which brings the dolphin to it. And there is what looks like a floating balloon. And balloons never really hold any bait. There's never any fish on balloons. It's normally just trash that just floats around. Bait gaff <laughs> Happy birthday! Oh, a dolphin's about to eat it. Oh yeah. They're turning their nose up to my live bait. No way. Twitch it, twitch a little bit. Get him fired up. Oh, he just ate it. Haha. <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna be keeper, but oh, it ripped right off. I need another one. Okay, come on, give me a good one. Not that little baby. Man, they look like go. they're, they got it. Yes. I got one. Dad, come on, you got the right on top of it. You got one too, I think, Dad. We'll measure that, bro. Nah, he's a little. You got Brian and, there's one right there, Deb. One's real little. There's four in the water. Oh, Dad. Oh, oh my goodness! It went right into my line. No, what is this line? Oh, that's my line. But my bait went There's out. There's some it. bigger dolphins, Deb. That one might be a keeper. Brian got one in the boat. Line. My bait went up my line, and the dolphin ate it on my line. And I thought I was tangled with someone. And then my dolphin got unhooked. A dead right bait. Here. Oh my gosh. It looks like he might be legal. Come on, eat it, eat it, oh, eat it, eat it, eat it. He's on it. No, not that little one. Oh, I got the bigger one, I think. You dropped it? Deb. Oh, what? Come on, take it. Take it, take it. Take Can it. I have a bait, Oh, baby. Go, mama, go. Here. That might have been the bigger one. I can't tell. We might have to measure that one. Yeah, that one might be a keeper. In the boat. In the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I Good got job, one. Deb. Look at him scoping. Uh -huh. Woo! There's another line in the he's mouth 24. of the one my mom. Oh, he's good. Oh, my mom got a keeper. He's over 20. He's over 20. He's good. You Brian, you got to start he's with the a, one on the head. He's yeah. got another. He's got another jig in him. Like not ours? I don't think so. I don't think we're used to be Okay. Too small. Oh, Where's go, going? mama, go. Off it on. That might be close. Flip them in, Mom. Flip them in. You got Good it. You job. got it. Good job. Oh. He's not the keeper. He's just short. Just, just short. All right. So this is the only keeper that we caught. We probably caught. My mom caught two. I caught two. My dad caught like two. So we just caught six. But this was the only keeper that we got. And it has someone else's line in there that broke off on someone. Or they're not broke. They're not broke. They're not broke. And there's a little jig head in here. See? We're not using that. 
Look at the little yellow tail jig. <laughs> well, it worked for him. So he's our dinner. You got, got a moose, Mom. Look at that thing. Wow, that's a big one. That might be the biggest that, blue runner I've ever seen. That's a big one. So as we're going from patch to patch, we're finding a lot of blue runners today. And look at these things. What do you think, Mom? Oh, it's fun. <laughs> so we're looking for more dolphin around the seaweed patches, but finding lots of those big blue runners, which are fun to catch, but we're just letting them go. Mom is on fire today with the dolphin. She's got another one. Dad's on. Mom's on. I was just getting ready to help her. What am I gonna do? Flip them in, Mom. Flip them in. That might, might be a good one. We found a good uh, patch of seaweed and we got some live baits out and we're getting some little dolphins. They're all between 18. Look at that squid he just spit out. You see that? I'm gonna flip him. He's hooked perfect. He might. He's worth a measure. Got him? Nice. These little guys, you want to get them in, measure them real quick, and let them go because they're kind of fragile fish. There are some fish that you can catch and release and they swim away good, but mahi are not the most hardy fish, so you want to get them in, get them unhooked, get them back in the water so that they live. And they're all actually the fastest growing fish in the ocean. So, like, there might be a ton of small ones out here, but in a couple weeks, you come out here and they're all going to be legal. That didn't take long, did it? Look how pretty he is. Watch, Brooke's gonna toss a bait back. Let's see if a dolphin finds it before the autumn goes. I think I got a dolphin. Yeah, you got a dolphin. That might be a keeper. No. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Putting on a good show though. Don't this might be a keeper. That is a keeper. I okay mom, watch out one second. Don't go forward. This is a keeper. Uh-oh. That's a keeper for sure. Sometimes during the summer you gotta get through a bunch of them to finally get a keeper. And that's a keeper. You know, he's small, but these little guys still have a lot of meat on them even though they're only 22 inches long. And they're delicious. Real. That's a little bowl. Put it here. Beautiful. Put it here. Look at there's another one right there. Look at all these on the coast. Vic's got a dolphin. 
There's another dolphin right there just swimming around. Oh, he's about to get your mom, you're about to catch a dolphin. He got it. He ate it. He ate it. Bring him in. Put him right in. Back up. Back up. Back up. That that one needs to be measured. Alright, we found some more dolphins. They're still all that same size. We can't find any big ones. Mm -hmm. He might be a keeper. Hey, Brooke, he's a keeper. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Yep. Okay. Yep, he's good. He's good. Good job. Keeper number three. How pretty. No better sight than seeing these guys out here. Get right to him, man. Brian said, watch this, Victor. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> oh. It's fun to pitch to them. So fun. Sight, sight cast fishing dolphin. It's fun. You ready, Brooke? Mm -hmm. who, unfi who unhooked more fish today? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's how you tell. I unhooked all my fish and all my wife's fish. So it was fun getting this bloody. <laughs> White shirts are meant to be red. We're going to need a lot of bleach. Alright guys, so we are back home and I am getting ready to fillet up my fish. We ended up catching five dolphins. And Victor caught this nice triple tail but you'll have to see his video to see that. But tonight we're going to be eating some dolphin as well as the triple tail for dinner. And we're gonna have some good old fried fish with these dolphin. You can't beat fried dolphin fingers. So I'm going to fillet up this guy. Now the one thing about dolphin is they are, I'm almost positive, the fastest growing fish in the ocean. So with the fastest growing fish in the ocean, they need to eat a lot. And their stomach contents are usually pretty disgusting because they digest their food pretty quick. It's about to start pouring, so we're gonna try to get this done before it starts raining. Now normally with fish, you wanna go around the head like this, but with dolphin, because their stomach is so big and disgusting, you usually want to try to avoid it. So what I'm going to do is make a cut from the head. They also have a lot of head meat, so you don't wanna miss out on the head meat. So we're gonna go from the head like this, and we're gonna go all the way to the top the beginning of this anal fin. Don't want to cut deep. I don't want to get into the stomach, but that's where I'm going to. You guys saw my dad and Victor's shirt because it was covered in blood and fish poop because these guys, they just, when you catch them, they just poop a lot and that's what happens. And their stomach is pretty disgusting. So don't want that in our meat. That's the last thing that you want on your beautiful fish fillets. Now with these little guys, they don't have a ton of head meat because, I mean, of its size. But if you get like a giant bull, which means a male dolphin, they have a ton of head meat. So once I get to the other side of the backbone, I'm just going to push my knife down. Like angle it down the other way. Beautiful. So I'm kind of just going over where the stomach is to connect that head cut, breaking through these pin bones. Oops. And there you go. There is your beautiful first side. Now, take off my sunglasses because it's getting dark. <laughs> all right, look, this was all really good. I didn't miss hardly any meat. There's, on a big fish, yeah, you can get, you can take the time to get the stomach part. But th there's not much meat there on th this little tiny dolphin, and I didn't want a chance getting into the stomach. I will show you guys the stomach contents after I knock off the other side. And a lot of people use this stomach piece on the bigger ones for swordfish bait. I'll cut it out so my grandma can use it as crab trap bait 
Um, but it does get used in some way. Good night. Mm -hmm. Now all the flay knives that you guys see us use are all Dexter Outdoors knives. Um, this is the six inch, um, the six inch Fisherman's Flex. And you guys can save 20% on all Dexter products with code BROOK20. So there's the second side I just knocked off. Now I'm going to skin it and I'm switching over to a nine inch flexible fillet knife. I like a nice long, thin, narrow knife on the edge of the fillet table. Start at the tail section, hold a little bit. Don't waste a giant chunk, it's not needed. Mahi have very thin skin, so you gotta be careful. You don't wanna leave skin. Beautiful. There we go. There is our skin. Some people like to take pliers and just peel the skin off. Um, a lot of like boat captains will do that because they don't want to take the time to just knock it off. They'll literally flip it over like this, they'll grab the skin and just rip it off. But we don't like doing that because it leaves like a white membrane that's kind of gross. So if you have the time to skin it, skin it. It's much better than just ripping off the skin. As long as you have a nice, good, sharp knife, you're not gonna leave a lot of meat behind. Look, there's nothing left. There's no need to take a pair of pliers and rip it off and leave grossness behind. <laughs> People claim you can't taste it when you eat it, but you know what? I don't like that, so I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing. Mahi do have a decent bloodline. You can see it there. So I'm going to just angle my knife like this cut it out as well as get the pin bones at the same time. So then we have a beautiful piece of white meat. Crab trap bait right there. There's your bloodline, pin bones in there. Beautiful white meat. All right, so now that the filet table is cleaned off, you always wanna get rid of your filets before you ever cut into something stomach because you, again, don't want that on your fish. So I filleted the fish up, got it into a plastic bag. Now let's check out the stomach. There's definitely something in there. This guy was either caught on a little pilchard that we were using as bait or a bucktail. I don't know which, exactly which one this is, but there's something big in here and it was not our bait. What do we got? That looks like a... Pilchard. A big pilchard? Well, that's all that was in there. Oh, there's some other grossness. You see how disgusting that is? That is just nasty. It's even shiny and gross. <laughs> you do not want to get that on your fish. This wasn't ours. I don't, it looks like a pilchard. So maybe someone else was throwing in chummers. They had big pilchards. Cause we didn't have big pilchards. We had little itty bitty pilchards. So maybe someone else fed them a pilchard that, that day out there. But that's all just nastiness. I don't know what's in there. Looks like a bunch of scales and stuff. I'm going to fillet up the rest of the dolphin. Victor's gonna fillet his triple tail and then I will meet you guys in the kitchen. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So as I said, I'm going to be making fried fish tonight and Victor is also going to be cooking his triple tail in these cast iron skillets on the grill. Something that I've been making basically since I can remember, my family has always made two special sauces every time we make fried fish. So, two very simple sauces. The first one is just simply ketchup and mayonnaise. Let's do the first one. It's kind of like 50-50, half mayonnaise, half ketchup. And if you guys have ever been to the Bahamas, um, I'm pretty sure when you get like cracked conch or fried conch or anything like that, they serve it with something that they call um, secret sauce? Fancy sauce. Fancy sauce. <laughs> They serve it with something called fancy sauce, and I'm almost positive it's this, which is just plain old ketchup and mayonnaise. We're gonna be here for a while. <laughs> if you're from the Bahamas and you actually know if fancy sauce is not just mayonnaise and ketchup, comment down below, but I'm pretty sure that's all. I'm stir that up. Okay, so there's your first sauce, your fancy sauce. Now, for your second sauce, mayonnaise again, mustard, Horseradish. 
Now, I feel like there are two people in this world. You have the people who like horseradish. Me! And you have the people who don't like horseradish, which is me. I don't like horseradish, but every time that I make this, my dad loves this. This is his favorite sauce. He used to be like the only person who would ever eat this one, but he loved a nice big clump of horseradish in there. And I know Victor loves horseradish too, so. Oh yeah. I think they're the only two that really like it. It's the Slovakian in me. So you get a nice big clump of horseradish, you got your mayonnaise, and then you got your mustard. That is a heaping pile of horseradish. We're gonna need a bigger bowl. I know. All right, so there are your two sauces. You got your fancy sauce, your ketchup sauce, and then you have your mustard horseradish sauce. And you always wanna make these first because you wanna put them in the fridge because you want to serve them cold. So we're gonna put these in the fridge and then we're gonna bread our fish. We are doing a cornmeal batter. So we have cornmeal here. This is the brand that I'm using. Diana Fine Cornmeal. So that's the cornmeal we're using. And we're gonna season this baby up with some Cajun seasoning. And some salt. We have our dolphin in buttermilk. So after I got home from filleting them, I made sure there wasn't any bones in there. I cut them all down to size and I have them soaking in buttermilk in the fridge for probably like two hours now. So now I'm gonna go from the buttermilk into the cornmeal. Once on one side, once on the other. Just get a little coating there. That's all we need to do. So after I spend, I don't know, 15 minutes <laughs> um, cornmealing all these up, we're gonna start frying them up. All right guys, so we are in the backyard, which we love frying outside if we have the choice to. It stopped raining, so hopefully it doesn't end up starting to rain because we have some clouds over there. You definitely don't wanna fry outside if it's gonna be raining, but it keeps your house from smelling like fish forever, <laughs> so. Now I have these kind of separated in the size. When I was playing them, once you cut out the bloodline, you have the top loin and the bottom loin. Your top loins are usually thicker than your bottom loins on a mahi. So these are all of my top loins. You can see that there's even kind of like the head section right there. And then the bottom loins are much skinnier. So I don't wanna mix it. I wanna do thick pieces together, skinny pieces together. That way everything cooks at the same time. So here we go. Now this is just peanut oil that I have in here. Okay, so first batch is coming out. Beautiful golden brown. And I'm just taking them out and putting them on some paper towels to just drain some of that excess oil. and just keep putting more batches in. So I was putting them into the oven to stay warm just on literally the warm setting, which is like 150 degrees, just so it wouldn't get cold. And there is our beautiful pile of fried fish. And check out these cast iron skillets of the triple tail that Victor made. Absolutely, they look amazing. I can't wait to try that. So a beautiful 
scoop of fish with juices, tomatoes, onions. Get some of that yummy juice on there. Just like that. And then whoever wants this can come pick up your fried fish. I want and that. This is our typical um, fancy sauce and then the mustard sauce. Mm. Right. I know you look, like look that. Look how pretty that is. Holy smokes. Isn't it nice to get served by your daughter after cooking for so many meals? That's awesome. Thank you. Time to enjoy. Well, fried dolphin fingers are not an elaborate recipe and I'm not going to even try to pretend that it is, but I used to be a Italian breadcrumbs only fried fish girl and I really enjoyed the cornmeal. So if you've never tried frying fish with cornmeal, highly recommend it. Putting it in that buttermilk first too also is really good. And you know, it's not always about having a elaborate recipe. What? Thing. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks, Vic. But you know, it's not always about having an elaborate recipe. Going out there, having fun, catching dinner is just the icing on the cake. Being out there with my parents is always just really fun. And then having a dinner with my family, you can't beat it. As for filming her outro, I don't know, I don't know why she's taking away from her amazing meal. I feel like since we cook so much, we're always like, feel like we need to just top every recipe. And because we want to do good for you guys and do all these recipes for you guys but the whole point is to go out there do something fun put your parents on the fish and then eat together that's what it's all about it doesn't matter what the recipe is and your cornmeal fish was delicious so stop <laughs> downplaying it it was good i just always feel like we just have to set the bar yeah high. but that's just because you're a hard-working person and you just want to get better that's what life is about it's just getting better better and better right yeah yeah you did a very good job Thank you, Vic. Victor's fish was absolutely amazing. Hey, guess what? Where did I learn it from? You guys you. have seen us cook on those skillets a ton of times, but in that bigger skillet where you have a rim like this big versus where we normally cook them on a little skillet, it just can hold so much more juice mm -hmm. and you're not worried about it drying out. And so everything just cooked amazing and held all the juice. So definitely check out his video. The triple tail was amazing. I'm pretty sure that was the first time I ever had triple tail. Me too. And it was absolutely delicious. But had a great day fishing, had a great dinner. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Later.